when Krishna and Balaram and cowherd boys go to Mathura for Kamsa's Olympics, When the ladies of Mathura see Krishna, he's so beautiful, Lavanyasaram. Actually, you could say Lavanyasaram means beauty cream. Or you could say it means the cream of beauty. Any way you take it, Krishna is the creme de la creme of all, beauti- all beautiful substances. So when they see him, they say Lavanyasaram, Asamordva means unparalleled, unequaled beauty. Their immediate thoughts, I mean, by inference, they're recognizing their own good fortune at seeing, beholding the beauty of Krishna. But their first thoughts are, gopyastapakkimacharanyaramusyarupam. What did the Braja Gopis do? That... What we now just had a glimpse of the beauty of Krishna and realized how fortunate we are, but they're drinking the nectar of Krishna's beauty incessantly, always. What did they do to achieve that position? Gopyas tapa. Some tapasya they did. Yadvansina sri lalana charatapo vihaya kamam suchitam vidavrita. Kasyana Bhavosha Chadeva Vidmahe Tabangri Renus Parashadikara, the wives of Kaliya, they're saying, This is unbelievable. Our husband, who was so offensive a few moments ago, now he's decorated with the dust of the lotus feet of Krishna all over his thousand heads. Right? And they're a little bruised. And he is wearing so many jewels. Rubies on the head, then the rubies are crushed, so there's like this beautiful red powder and from the kumkum, so many things. They're saying, he was so offensive and now he's blessed with the dust of the lotus feet of Krishna, but Lakshmi Devi, Yadvanchana Sri Lalana Charatapo, she did tapa for so many lifetimes and couldn't get this sort of benediction. So it's not tapa. They're thinking, gopyas tapa kimacharan. Maybe they did some kind of tapasya. Uh, <laughs> we first heard when reading the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Brahma being born from the lotus navel of Garvadakshai Vishnu, right? the lotus stem comes out, the lotus flower opens, and Brahma awakens to find himself sitting on this oh, rather large lotus flower. And he can't see Vishnu from his position. He's starting to wonder, who am I? Where have I come from? What is my purpose? And we're told, here's the sound, ta, pa, ta, pa. And he gets some inspiration to do tapasya. But in one place, Srila Prabhupada defines it as voluntarily inconveniencing oneself for the sake of spiritual realization. That's how we understand it in the general sense. But when we factor in Sarvashad Gunavishishta, Bhagavan Sarvashad Gunavishishta, that the Braja Gopis, they're so automatically, irresistibly drawn by the beauty, charm, and sweetness of Krishna to offer themselves wholesale to him, to offer themselves to be exploited by Krishna to the nth degree, uh, that there's no consideration of inconvenience or voluntarily, and it's almost involuntary. So for they uh, possess this type of devotion, which is so extraordinary. It is the devotion of Srimati Radharani reflected into their hearts. They're serving her. Her type of devotion has come to them. That in the uh, Chaitanyastakam of Rupa Goswami, 
सुरेशानाम दुर्गम गति अति शयनोपनिषदा मुनिनाम सर्वसम प्रणत माधुरीमा विनियसा प्रेमना पाशु पदाबुजा सच्चेतन्न किमे पुनर्भिदर्यासाति पदम दे आर सेंग द ब्रज गोपीज ऑब्जर्व दैट सुरेशानाम दुर्गम गति अतिशयनोपनिषदम बट वेरी डिफिकल्ट for the sura isha means the highest demigods and the upanishads as we told shruti vir brimigram they they can only indicate that direction the braja gopis have got full possession of that divine substance and gurumar says indicated here they're astonished to see that in krishna as mahaprabhu saying the love that we find in the heart of our mistress meaning shrimati radharani now he's come to personify that 